This is the Frontier Freedom Hour, sponsored by Centennial Institute at Colorado Christian University. Here's Jeff Hunt. All right, you cowboys and cowgirls, we got Tim Malash on from Biola University. He's the adjunct faculty member in the political science department. And we've been talking all things Israel, Hamas, Palestine. So if you missed anything, go back to FrontierFreedomRadio.com. You can listen to the podcast there, FrontierFreedomRadio.com. So, uh, Professor Malash, we've noted that Hamas's intent is the full destruction of Israel. So at this point, is Israel's response have to be the full destruction of Hamas? Well, I think they could say that's our objective, but then the devil's in the details. So what does that full destruction look like? I, I, and this is, this is the sobering reality. We don't know what it looks like to fully destroy a terrorist organization. Mm-hmm. America has not fully destroyed al-Qaeda. America has not fully destroyed ISIS. We did not fully destroy uh, the Taliban. Um, you know, just to you know, play off the big three in the American imagination, like those are the big three terrorist organizations. So um, what does it look like then? to destroy um, a terrorist organization. I'm not entirely sure we've fully answered the question. And this gets at what some of the um, uh, strategic dilemmas that face Israel right now, because I think they recognize, uh, as, as I've said before on my, uh, in my newsletter but, uh, that you quoted earlier, um, they recognize that Hamas is kind of like all in. They've really expended a lot of resources on this and uh, they cannot countenance a similar uh, attack. They certainly can't let that go. Um, can, can I ask this so question, destroy though? Him, but I don't know if we really know how that, what that looks like. And maybe, You're not going to destroy every fighter. Yeah, and maybe this is just a dumb question. <laughs> but you're going up against the Israeli army with guys that, like, first of all, most of the time have no idea where the rockets are landing. They're just kind of shooting them off and they land mm-hmm. in fields. Uh, maybe these, I mean, what, is there an expectation that Hamas could actually defeat Israel or is this just kind of a a religious sacrifice, kind of like a suicide bomber? It could be a little of both actually, um, because they, you know, they do have their cadres of suicide foot soldiers and, but they, but not all of them are like that. Right. right? So, uh, so they do have that group, but that's not, that doesn't, that's not all of them. Clearly they're organized as much as a terrorist organization, they're also organized as a, you know, as a quasi government political party. And so they obviously have some kind of, you know, political program they're trying to implement and you can't do that with only martyrs. And so, uh, so yeah, I, I, it could be a situation where, and this is, I think of deep concern to me and a lot of people watching Israel prepare for this, um, eventual, uh, invasion of Gaza. I mean, I don't know what else to call it, invasion, incursion, what, whatever they're going to call it, um, is what's the end game? Because Israel's had a try at governing and administering Gaza in, in the past, and it's very, very difficult. It's very hard. They're not going to be welcome in there. Um, you ha- so that's that's one option. You could just go take it over and, and then mop up Hamas as you go street by street, house by house, tunnel by tunnel. But that's going to that's gonna take a long time. It's going to be very difficult. Uh, and then you're going to have a very hostile um, population around you at the same time. So, and the world looking over your shoulder every time uh, there's an instance of collateral damage. And the sad fact is there will be. I mean, this, this is a very densely populated area. There are going to be civilian deaths, whether they're intended or not. Is I mean, they're just, there's just going to be. That's just going to be the case. That's what happens when you fight in a densely populated urban area, and that's just the the sad fact of it. And so we have to be. Um, you know, I think we have to be cognizant of that. I think Israel's cognizant of that. That's why, you know, it's two weeks and they haven't gone storming in there. They're really trying to clear as much ground as possible before they do that. Um, yeah, so I think it's anybody's guess what Israel's endgame is. The, the, uh, that they want to destroy and certainly incapacitate Hamas from ever being able to do an operation like this again, I think is at least the bare minimum objective. But then, how do you prevent Hamas from cropping up again? You know, how, how do you prevent Hamas from becoming a hydra? 
uh, where you cut off one head and two more pop up. I think that's still a bit of a question, dilemma that everybody's trying to figure out still. So I saw recently like a rocket came from Yemen. And yeah. the U.S. Navy shot that down. Mm-hmm. What is... Who's shooting from Yemen? I mean, that's a, that's not right even next door to Israel. No, that's uh, yeah, that's that's a rocket that's going to go over Saudi Arabia and towards <laughs> Israel if it's headed to Israel. So we don't uh, we haven't. It's been the the Pentagon said that it was that the flight path looked like it was directed at Israel. Okay, fine. Maybe it was headed there. It also could have been headed towards uh, targets in Saudi Arabia because the Houthi rebels who are backed by Iran in Yemen. Uh, have launched drone and missile and rocket attacks at uh, oil refineries and other such facilities inside Saudi Arabia over the past few years. So that kind of activity from them is not unheard of, uh, but it is the first time that we know of in a publicized case where America uh, responded that way and just took them out. And so uh, as a, in some, assuming that they were headed towards Israel, I think they, that's what America's support for Israel generally is going to look like hmm. going forward for, uh, for the foreseeable future is that kind of uh, backup. I think it's us communicating to Iran. You keep your, you know, you keep your proxies at bay. We're trying to, like, let Israel and Hamas fight this out. Obviously, Iran's not going to want to do that. They're trying to leverage as many of their proxies as possible to um, create uh, create security dilemmas and problems for um, Israel and its allies. Talking with Tim Malash of Biola University, adjunct faculty in Biola's political science department and a graduate, PhD, graduate of Claremont University, graduate university. So I'm watching President Biden's speech last night, and he's got to tackle a few things. One that was unique to me is he's, he's got to marry Israel and Hamas with Ukraine and, and Russia. And so a big mm-hmm. portion of his speech is this notion of like, America defends democracy where democracy is under threat. And we will be there to help. By the way, I just gave you way more energy than he did during his speech. <laughs> all right. So he's, he's okay. my Appreciate goodness, it. he is propped up at this point. Um, yeah. So he, urgent budget request ties Israel and Ukraine together. He wants to build quote, a better future for the Middle East. And <sighs> Dr. Malash, I, I'll tell you, when I was at Fuller Seminary, I was a passionate defender of the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, especially coming off of 9-11, what happens in these countries if you allow terrorism to fester, it will ultimately come to our doorstep. Which has happened if you're in for Israel. Right, exactly. Yep. And, and you know, I, I it made... It fit just war theory. I was debating Glenn Stassen about all this in the student newspaper. And I got to be honest, where I am now is exhausted. I had friends die yeah. in Iraq. We spent mm-hmm. trillions of dollars there. The Christian community is essentially just totally abandoned Iraq. I mean, they're they're gone. There's no Christians yeah. left in, in Iraq now. And so I sit at that point, and this is where Yoram Hazoni has been really appealing to a lot of conservatives, Israeli political philosopher, is like, yeah, there, there's cultural issues there that we're never going to be able to deal with. And mm-hmm. this idea that we can kind of, quote, build a better future in the Middle East, I don't know if I really believe that anymore. Yeah, I think you speak to a, a certain uh, cynicism that's set in for a lot of conservatives, but not even, I, I think there's probably just that similar um, cynicism even outside um, conservatives. Uh, a lot of people on the political left set, feel this uh, cynicism too. And I think it's it's fairly well-founded. Um, where I would push back against this idea that, like, uh, you know, there's just irreconcilable cultural differences uh, between nations, Um even if that is the case, let's just assume it is, um, even if that's the case, that doesn't mean that you don't do nothing. Mm-hmm. And I think that's part of what the debate is now over Israel. It's like, should America be involved? If so, to what extent? I, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good policy discussion to have, because um, we do have friends and allies, people right. we do share. Right. Some uh, political uh, values and political cultural distinctives with, uh, especially other democratic countries. So, um, critical as I am of 
the Biden administration's foreign policy, particularly in the Middle East, um, I can at least appreciate where uh, the president is coming from. But I will say I, he's kind of trafficking in all the same terminology and rhetoric that tip of, has typified um, past presidential administrations. And I think what you're pointing to is we're hearing the same exact rhetoric for a world that clearly has changed yeah. and not for the better. <laughs> well, and, 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 that, and that suggests a certain poverty of strategic and moral thinking uh, among the American leadership class, I think, at and, the very least. And we have spent, we've walked down this road, we spent a lot of money, we tried, I, I was a firm believer, I remember personally going in like, if the Afghanistan people can just taste democracy, then they yeah. will sh- throw off all these hindrances of mm-hmm. oppressive Islam and embrace, you know, uh, American Western democracy and all that. And little girls are going to go to school. And then within mm-hmm. three days and 20 years and trillions of dollars <laughs> and blood spent, it was all back to the way it was. And so when he says mm-hmm. things like American leadership is what holds the world together and we are going to yeah. build the arsenal of democracy. Yeah. I, I'm just like, oh, man. Now, I think it's different when it has to come with defending Israel. And we're up against a commercial break. We'll continue this when we get back. But I was in Israel in April. It is a wonderful, beautiful country with people that embrace our values. They are a true ally. And so we absolutely should be there to defend them. But, oh, man, I feel like we're marching down that road again. All right, Jeff Hunt, Chief Wagon Boss of the Frontier Freedom Hour. We'll be right back after these messages.